Hey guys, and welcome to the Cigar Lounge Cigar Talk Show. I'm your host, Aaron Paletta, and today it's an unusually warm, yet still somehow pretty crappy March day here in Western Pennsylvania, but I have something that I'm hoping will brighten everybody's mood. Today we have the distinct pleasure of going over and speaking to the founder of La Barba Cigars and the co-founder of Lost and Found Cigars. Today, we're going to Niles, Ohio to film at the Havana House. Hey guys, so we're finally here in Niles, Ohio, which took about 40 minutes to get to from where we're at and uh, officially at the Havana House. But I told you before that I left that we're gonna be speaking with founder of La Barba Cigars and the co-founder of Lost and Found Cigars. Tony Bellotto himself is waiting inside, so let's head in. My pleasure, what's happening? So, Tony Bellotto, the man himself, I've been here a couple times, I bought cigars from you. Um, one of the very few places within an hour that actually carries Padrones. And everybody knows I'm a huge fan of Padron. But you have way more than just cigars in here. That is correct. Way more cigars. So, given your background with the wine, tell me about it. So, I went to, we've been in business for 50 years. I'm third generation. My grandfather started in 1972 with my dad as a kind of book and newsstand. Uh, I went when I was in college. I fell in love with wine. Long story short, um, found out that there was a WSET, which stands for Wine and Spirits Education Trust, school in Cleveland of all places. There was only three at Cleveland. the time. Cleveland. Yeah, in Cleveland. It's called the Cleveland Wine we'll, School. Go we'll figure that. And I did as much research as I could in defining out like how I can advance my knowledge and, and become accredited kind of have you know letters after my name um, to be a professional in wine so I went I started at Cleveland Wine School and basically it's a it's kind of like an apprenticeship program where uh, the te the person that teaches you has a, the degree above you if that makes any sense uh, so my teacher was Marianne France she was a WSET level four um, I went from I started in this in the second WSET two because the one is basically for like Hot. Like if you if you wanted to know more about wine and didn't want to have a career in it, you could take the, the level one class and you would have a general knowledge of. Okay, of, I, I got you. Right. So the, I'm WSET level three. Um, I can't be a WSET. So that'd be like having a master's degree in wine, so to speak. Um, in order for me to get my PhD, uh, Marianne has to become a master of wine, so she can teach me the WSET four class, and that is a master of wine. And I think there's only 20 of them in the world. So. So you can't move up unless your teacher moves Correct. up. Correct. That's interesting, but okay. So, but I'm allowed, so I'm allowed to teach, and I taught for Youngstown State University. I'm allowed to teach the two and one classes because I'm a certified three okay. so, uh, sommelier. So I, I did actually teach classes for a while. Interesting. I love wine. Uh, I, used to, I used to be real big into wine when I was a chef out in Vegas because, you know, we, we cook with wine and all oh, yeah, the, of the fine dining restaurants that, uh, that I personally worked in, you know, we use wine for everything. So. It was one of them things where if you were going to cook with it, you had to taste it. Right. They always say don't cook with what you wouldn't drink. Exactly. So got to taste a lot of wines. But your wine collection here is, I mean, this is this is bigger than most stores. So is there anything you want to highlight in here? Because I mean, it looks like you actually got it all. Um, not nothing specific. I mean, it's all uh, it's all hand picked. I do actually have this is mine. Um, so I like to, as you know, I if I get into something, I really get into it. So. Um, when I started with wine, I always wanted my own wine, and I wanted a, a wine that went with cigars, and I found out that Cava um, went really well with cigars, and Cava is a uh, sparkling wine from Spain that's made in the traditional champagne method. Uh, so I met with my friend Hunter, and um, who owns Tre my friend Hunter, who owns Treasure Hunter Wine Company, and I said, you know, I'd really, really like to try to do a Spanish sparkling wine that, that paired very well with cigars. So. We went on this journey 
and came up with the uh, Viva La Vida, and it's a Spanish sparkling rosé, uh, Cava from, from Spain. It's 100% Pinot Noir, uh, and it's a real rosé, which means we don't add red wine to white wine to make it pink, uh, and it's dry, so it's not, it, it's got like eight grams per liter of sugar, so it's, it's a little sweet, but it, it, it is not that sweet, so. Oh, really? But I import that directly from Spain. And this is yours, so let me get a caption. So this is your, you designed this? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I did the whole, I the, the wine, I went over probably 500, 600 different variations of, of tasting different cabas that they sent me in little tiny bottles and picked and mixed what I wanted. So it's basically a wine that I created that they make in Spain for me. I'll have to get a bottle before we walk out of here because so I, I do want to try it. To that. highlight something, that would be what I would highlight. Awesome. I also noticed that you have a boatload of coffee and, yes. I'm, and I'm a coffee whore. So right. let's Come on, go back. over there. So again, like I was saying with Viva La Vida, anything I do, I you know kind of take it take it to the next level. Um, we originally start, we originally gave away coffee back in the 80s and my dad being himself decided that he didn't want to give away coffee anymore. He just had a regular coffee pot with like garbage Folgers that anyone could come in and get. So in the early 2000s, we decided that we were going to get into the coffee business. Um, I went to barista school also um, in, in uh, Columbus or no Cincinnati. Hey, you, yeah, can't, you can't go wrong with with knowledge. So right. I, I, mean, I applaud you for that. I if I was going to be a lawyer, I'd have to go to law school, right? That's kind of the way it goes. So I actually went in Dayton and we were buying our coffee off of a company called Boston Soaker at the time. Um, it's a really great company in, in Dayton. They have really great coffee down there. So I had to go work down there uh, in their roastery. I had to go learn how to use the espresso machine, learn how to make drinks. I came back with that and we, we added a coffee program to, to all of our locations. Fast forward, I had a gentleman come to me who sold me billboard advertising. And he was this hippie named Jay. And he said, well, how, where do you get your coffee? And I said, well, I buy it in, in Dayton. And he said, uh, well, can I have your coffee business? And I was like, well, like we do a lot of business in coffee. Can you keep up? And at the time he had like a rotisserie on his grill uh, that would roast coffee. And he, he actually really kept up and started supplying us with coffee, but he was an older gentleman and decided he wanted to retire. And I was caught between a rock and a hard place and, and wasn't really sure what I was gonna do. So I decided that I was gonna start my own coffee company. <laughs> so I created Youngstown Coffee Company. Uh, we roast all of our coffee in Boardman. Um, we went from a five pound roaster to a 75 pound at a time roaster. Uh, De Stoner, we have a, I can't remember the name of the machine. I'm drawing a blank because I'm doing this interview. But it's a really, it's a cool, it normally happens it's, a, it's a kid from, uh, it's a kid from California, 27 year old kid that builds coffee roasters. Um, and he worked for Dietrich, which was a, those coffee, those roasters are a couple hundred thousand dollars. And he wanted to kind of, um, you know, get back at them by starting his own company. So he, he makes very inexpensive, those roasters don't have to be that expensive. They, they just, they're just like, it's like a for Lexus and Toyota situation. You know what I mean? All right. So same car, different badge. Yeah. So we used him and he's helped us through the process. And now we have, we can plug our computer or ladder or tablet into the, into the roaster. Um, we started with a roaster that was from the seventies. That was from Turkey. Everything was in metric and you couldn't get parts for it. Um, so now we're kind of, you know, chugging along with that. We're doing, we're canning our old cold brew at a local brewery, Biker Brew House. Um, I collaborate with my friends at Modern Methods and, and Birdfish and Ill Will Brewing Company. They all use our coffee in their, um, we have a uh, beer called the Percolator, which is a coffee lager um, that I sat down and we went through all of our coffees and we used uh, tea balls, like those mesh tea balls. We made like 70 different cans of beer with 70 different kinds of coffee to pick out the perfect coffee to go with this lager. Um, it's a really unique product. And then I do the, the Dude Coffee beer, which is a white Russian Imperial Stout with birdfish. And every, and this year on April 20th, ironically enough, 420, um, we're launching the Dude. It only comes out once a year. Uh, it's here at Havana House. It's the first day we have a reggae band coming. And then on Friday the 21st, we're at Westside Bowl where we watch Big Lebowski and uh, Bowl all, all night. And then on 
Saturday is the big day at Birdfish where they get a liquor license so you can drink in the whole town of Columbiana and you can go watch the dude at the, th the town movie theater and everybody dresses up like the Big, Lebo like the big Lebowski characters. And it's that sounds like a, a fun time, yeah. actually. So wine, coffee, I think this guy does more than I do. And I do a lot of shit. So wine, coffee, yeah. I know you do your cigars because I've had your cigars and I love the cigars. So why don't we move to All right. your cigars? Let's go this way. So, in 2012, uh, I met a gentleman named Robert Caldwell. Uh, him and I became very good friends. Um, I was telling him about, him about my wine background, my history in the cigar business. Uh, he owned a cigar factory in uh, Miami at the time called the Winwood Cigar Factory. Um, very cool, very, it was very much my style. I'm into art and wine and food, and so is Robert. Um, I never thought it would be possible to blend a cigar. I always thought it was for like, you know, people in Cuba, and I didn't think a 20, I was 26 at the time, I didn't think a 26 year old kid could blend a cigar. Rob changed my mind about that. Um, he started, show, he, he was, he had been blending cigars because he's a native, native Miami guy for years. Um, and he started to show me what tobaccos go with what. We met the Ventura family. It's a very long story, but uh, Henderson's father, William, was the master blender at Davidoff for 35 years. Um, he retired and him and his son, his son wanted to start a cigar factory. At the time, the cigar factory was very small. It was about 500 square feet uh, when we started producing cigars. And at the time, unfortunately, our factory burned down like, mm, six months ago, uh, but it was about 15,000 square foot factory. We made about 4 million cigars a year. And that combined. particular factory, that's the one that affected the purple and the red? Right, so in the La Barba Purple, I used a tobacco called Carbonell. Uh, it comes from a single farm, single family, um, very small production facility, and I'm in, I'm its entire crop every year for my Lebron Purple. Well, unfortunately, we age our own tobacco now, and two years worth of that tobacco was sitting in the warehouse when it burned down, so I had to discontinue this line for now. Uh, and the same for Labarba Red, and the reason for that was because we are one of the only people in the cigar industry other than Christian Eroa that grows and ferments Dominican grown Corojo tobacco, not hybridized. So it's a non hybridized Cuban Corojo seed. So La Barba Red was as close to a Cuban cigar as you could get that's made in Dominican Republic. Um, that tobacco was in that uh, factory also. So I'm two years back on that. So I had to discontinue those lines. So as of right now, I know Cigars International had had it. I don't know if it's completely discontinued. Uh, Havana House is both what Niles and Bourbon carry carry those yeah we're obviously starting to run low yeah and the grand resort uh has them as well so yes. when you see this episode if you haven't had them get them because you ain't gonna have them for a while correct collector's item uh then we do i do La Bar the newest one is la barba ricochet connecticut uh that's a connecticut ecuador and connecticut wrapper uh with filler tobaccos from pennsylvania indonesia nicaragua and dominican republic there's ricochet mexi soul that's a uh sun-grown mexican habano wrapper uh, same fillers um, as the Connecticut, and there's the Oscuro, uh, which is a Mexican San Andres, Mexican Mexican San Andres Maduro wrapper. Um, same binder and fillers, the other ricochets. Um, that's the the orange one has the San Andres. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's probably why I like that. They're it's both San Andres, orange. but the this one is uh, a San Grown wrapper, and this one's a Oscuro Maduro wrapper. Okay. Interesting. And you're also, you're also a co-founder of The Lost and Found as well, correct? Yes, so in the middle here, uh, that's my iteration of 22 Minutes to Midnight. Um, that was when I texted Rob that we should start Lost and Found, uh, when I kind of had the idea to do a company like Lost and Found. Um, and basically how Lost and Found started was we were finding a ton of cigars at different uh, warehouses that were not being used for whatever reason. And they're not seconds. They're just, say, John Smith wanted to start a cigar brand and the financing didn't come through, but they made the cigars. They didn't throw the cigars away. Or for example, and this happens a lot with wine, and that's how Treasure Hunter Wines, my buddy Hunter, started his company. If, say, Davidoff does the year of the whatever, or the Rabbit chef's edition. Yeah. 
um, or Padron does a limited edition, or Fuente does a limited edition, they will make, if they're, if they're gonna make a limited cigar of 2,000 cigars, they will actually make closer to 4,000 cigars just in case those 2,000 are perfect. But if they all turn out perfect, then they kind of just sit in an aging room for people to like slowly smoke or the owner smokes or, but some companies have millions of those cigars from back to the early two, like we did the antique line and those were cigars from 2002, 2003. And the company's evolved over the past 10 years as to where there's been a lot of copycats and a lot of people that have been doing what I've been, what we've started. But I, and ironically, even the companies themselves that we were buying cigars off started, they're cutting out the middleman. So, so they started after you did it. Right. So Gotta love it. we decided to shift our model and we're now producing cigars for Lost and Found. So this is our first regular production, well, limited regular production cigar uh, with 22 minutes to midnight. The average age of these tobaccos is 25 years. So we're not finding eight, we're not finding old cigars, we're finding old tobacco to make the cigar. And then cigar. making your blend from right. that. So it's, it's a different shift in the model and we're also not, we're moving away from the paper uh, like the, the butcher paper that we started that is now obviously you've seen has been duplicated many times but we've moved away from that model and now we're we're boxing and banning our products um, like instant classic over there in 22 minutes of midnight so interestingly enough the, the night that I met you actually was at the had to have been the Oliva event you handed me one of those and I didn't know what the hell it was. And I actually had to ask Joe Bonham, like, is this called the 1138? Like, what yeah. is this thing? And then he told me, fantastic cigar. And actually, if you both haven't tried that, I would recommend that you get one. But what a treat that was. And then you also gave me the, uh, what is that, the, the Corona or Petit Corona there? The Cafe? Yeah. Yeah. You gave me that one. Holy shit, did that thing kick. That thing had some fantastic flavor to it. Yeah, it's a But or orange is my favorite, hands down. The Cafe is a powerful little Connecticut. I made it, it's a cigar smoker's Connecticut, you know, like, the old school, old school Connecticut is for old school guys, kind of, you know, and, and we decided that we were going to try to, you know, give the new cigar smoker a Connecticut cigar that they can enjoy um, outside, of the, outside of the classic companies that have been doing the same Connecticut cigar. It's kind of like that mild, bland, you know, we wanted to amp it up a little bit. You know, honestly, and that's one of the reasons why I can't stand Connecticut. It's because every time you smoke one, it's a very mild pencil shaving flavor, and I can't stand it. There's very few that I've actually enjoyed. That was one of them. So, and I actually have a box of those in my humor because it is a Connecticut. You know, everybody who watches this episode knows that I, I hate Connecticut. So I will smoke the shit out of that. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, I mean, aside from those, and obviously you've got some Caldwells in here. We can we can see back here. Yeah, I don't care about him. I don't care about him. Um, aside from that, I mean, you obviously, you got Fuentes, you got Padron, you got Ashens, you got LaFleur's. Um, do you carry the same stock in both your locations, both Wardman and Niles? We, you know, we have a third location in Bath as well. So in Akron, Ohio and Matt Warris runs that store. Um, so Matt has, so in our bath location, we have kind of different, they're, they're, where, they're way more craft oriented in, in Akron. So Matt does a lot of Viaje, a lot of Roma Craft, a lot of that, Crown Heads, those brands. <clears throat> Whereas here, it's a little bit more traditional. I have a lot of boutiques because they're my friends. So I like to do business with my friends. Um, and then Boardman, our Boardman location, that's my dad's store, so it's a little bit even more traditional as far as the legacy brands that he has there. But he has, he obviously has craft cigars there, but um, he's way more driven, way more legacy brand driven or focused. Okay, because I actually haven't been to the Borman location. Didn't even know you had a third location. So the Borman location, we have a private 24 hour uh, members lounge. So you can come and go whenever you want for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and that store has been there since 1972. Oh, wow. is that the OG? Uh, well, this, the original one was in Girard. It was Girard okay. Book and News. Okay, interesting. It's when newspapers and magazines were the thing. Yeah, these young kids won't know yeah, anything they're... about that now. Um, well, that's cool. Uh, I'm, I, actually, we need to go over there one of these days and actually check that out, because I, I have yet to go over there. Um, aside from what we see, is there anything else that would be different from that location to this location. I mean, obviously we got B-roll racing, you know, we got the bar back there. You can order your drinks, you can order your coffee. So this is the only location that has a bar. The other ones, the the lounge, if you're a member, you can bring your own, but this is the only one that you can, um, you can have, you can drink in, if that makes any sense. 
The other one's a package store. It does have beer and wine, but it's to go only. And then the Akron location is just uh, cigars. Just cigars, okay. So if you want it all, come to this location. That's what we're coming down to. Yeah. So booze, coffee, cigars. You wanna check out the beer too? I do wanna check out the right. beer. The, the story with the beer is I also got into, I started home brewing beer, of course, um, and got into brewing beer with a friend of mine. Um, and this was way back when craft beer wasn't really a thing. So this was probably 15 years ago where, you know, craft beer was Sierra Nevada and Rogue and it was cool to get beer from the West Coast. and. It wasn't really, it's, it's become really regionalized in the past couple of years. I don't know if you noticed all the craft breweries that have been popping up. I, don't, I know you said you're not a beer guy, but um, it, it's become very regional. So our selection has always been this vast, but now it's a little bit more centralized because my, my good friends own breweries, two of my very best friends own Modern Methods and Birdfish Brewing, um, who I do a lot of work, coffee work with, um, and we carry all their beer here. Um, but Basically, the evolution of this cooler has been, it used to be a lot of Belgian beers, German beers, West Coast beers, and now it's more Youngstown beers, Ohio so, beers, so PA beers. So you're more regionally concentrated now when it comes to what you're stocking. Exactly, so just this, this one door is all of our West Coast selection now, um, where it used to be four or five doors. And then this, like this door is Midwest. The door behind you is just all our local beers. The door next to that is all Ohio beers. So it's way more concentrated on our region versus the country now. Okay. I mean, that's good though. But I appreciate stuff like that because having lived out there for so long, there was one thing back when I did drink beer, there was one thing that I could not get that I wanted and that was Rolling Rock. Yeah. Nobody carried it. So the fact that you even bring in beers from the West Coast, it gives people who maybe will never travel out there, it gives them a taste of that. Yeah, and that's, so that's actually kind of cool. And that's what we've always tried to do. But like I said, you know, it just, it, it, it's very liquid and it's kind of shifting, but I think it's, I think more than ever, especially today and our climate is to really support your community and support other people that are, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a small business owner. And I think it's very important that we all have each other's backs because I think a rising tide rises all ships. So I try to, in everything that I do, I try to focus on any project I, I do. Like for example, we just had an event um, last week where we did, uh, it was a Youngstown Coffee and Monte Cristo pairing event. So we used our cold brew um, in, in, in the event, but Birdfish did a special beer for us, one keg that just was with our coffee. Modern Methods did the same. Ill Will did the same. So I like to collaborate to try to make sure that everybody here, because Youngstown's always been a place where everybody says it's failing. You know, it's where I hear it all over the country. And for me, it's a place that's on the rise. And if people like me and our like-minded groups all work together, then we can really raise this place up. And well, you absolutely can. I mean, even when, even when I lived out west, you know, there I saw a couple guys walking down the strip that had, you know, Youngstown Burger Capital of the World two yeah. years in a row. I'm like, we got to get away from that because yeah. you know that's the old days. Everything's growing, and I agree with you 100. percent I mean, I'm a small business owner as well, and I always shop local if I can. Yep. I mean, it's nothing against you know the online companies, but like th this is where it's at right here. This is where it's at, and then that's where you got to keep. It. Yeah, absolutely. So I appreciate that, that you actually do that as well. And then you help out all your buddies. That's fantastic. Um, aside from this, I mean, we got to, you know, got to see your whole store. And I, I do want to talk to a couple of your, your patrons if they'll actually be brave enough to get on camera. Yeah, but, I'm sure. Uh, the, I mean, the guys at the bar are, are all regulars, I think. So. Well, you know, I just want them to talk you up a little bit. That's yeah, really sure, what sure. I like to. But uh, I mean, aside from this, is there anything else that you want to cover? Uh, at either of your locations? No, if not, unless you have any other questions, I don't know. Oh, man, I'm, I'm, I mean, if you want to see that, I have the all so all the cigars come into this location so if you want to see i, I can take you in the walk-in actually yeah if you do let's go see that oh here we go um 
so it's kind of full right now but this this is basically this section is my is he my, says that like it's a bad thing it's it, full right now. yeah this is kind of my private stash um this is all stuff down here you'll probably never see or may see one day the kind of one-off stuff from lost and found um uh, i have all a bunch of antiques from 06 04 hey i just uh, had the 04 a couple days ago that was good the teeny tiny tony 12s those are done i got some old el pavo that's when we we fed 30,000 families with that project wow. thanksgiving dinner that was a fun one but we have we do have a charitable component for lost and found called give a fuck and um basically we try to give back uh we've done thanksgiving dinners for families we've done food banks we've done uh during oddly enough during covid and you wouldn't think of this but um if you're an inner, if you're in, in an inner city school when you go to art class your supplies are given to you right so they have colored pencils and crayons and paint and everything right. you don't think about if you're homeschooled that you need to have all that stuff so when COVID happened, these kids didn't have art supplies and they couldn't do art. So what we did with the Give a Fuck uh, charity was provided, um, in Chicago we provided kids in, that couldn't, couldn't afford art supplies, we provided them with art supplies. So that's what we, 100% of any of those projects go to charity. We don't take a dime for those. That's fantastic. This one was called No Free Lunch. Um, that, that's another one where we, um, we're able to give bag lunches to people that were in need. So we try to give back to as much as we can. I found a new hero. I'm just saying. And I, I appreciate everything you do. My pleasure, man. It was an honor to be able to come in here finally after two years and get you. Well, you heard it here. Niles location, Boardman and Akron, yep. right? Havana House. Go check them out. Let's see if we can go talk to some patrons. Hey guys, we're here with Mike, who's uh, actually a customer. It's nice to meet you. Nice um, to meet you. He's a customer here at the Havana House. And just real quick, I mean, I don't come over here very often because it's about a 40 minute drive for me to get here. But what what do you enjoy about coming to this? Good atmosphere, good people, you find everything you need. They have alcohol, well, they, cigar. They got a lot of stuff, actually. Yeah, everything, I, I yes. was shocked. I mean, the whole, whole wall of wine, coffee behind the bar. The staff over here very nice. They're very kind people. I've been coming for like nine years now, at least nine years. Good, nine years. A good nine years. Yeah, it's been a while. Good people. That's, that's dedication, yeah, right that's, there. That's dedication. I used to come like three, four times a week, but I stopped. I quit smoking, so I stopped. Oh, but you still come for the coffee. You gotta have the espresso. The espresso? Yes. Make you sure. Gotta have write it. that down, you man. We need to have espresso. some That's some the main espresso. thing. That's the main thing right well, there. Well, if, if you could, if you could tell anybody watching this episode who's never been here, what would you what would you tell them? Come on in. Anything, Try it. anything specific you haven't tried? Uh, please come in and just come and join it. You can sit down, relax, and smoke. There isn't that many places out there you can sit down and smoke and relax. No, that's you could do this right here. That's true. He's one of the good people who used to work here too. That's good. Well, you heard it. Please. You heard it. I appreciate it, Mike. Thanks. No problem. Yes, sir. Hey guys, we're here with Robin. You're a you're a regular customer. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Tell me, because I I got another gentleman over there. How long you been coming to, to this location, or, uh, do, or do you visit them all? Ah, uh, no. I mean, this one is my main one. I live in Niles, and I've been coming here since about 2007. Oh wow, yes. that long. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, I mean, I know why I come over here because it's like a 45 minute drive, 40 45 minutes yeah. for me to get here. Why do you keep coming back here? I mean, the, the cigars, the beer selection, uh, the fact that you can drink and have a cigar at the same time. It's kind of like an oasis in a desert around here, so. It is. That is enjoyable. I mean, I don't really drink anymore, but, you know, to be able to walk in, have a coffee, sit down and have your sure. cigar, I mean, there's nothing better than that. Coffee's great, too. At the end of the day. Uh, is there anything you tell anybody watching this, anything about here in particular, I mean, other than the fact that you can drink and enjoy your cigar? Uh, I mean, it's just there's really great people here. The bartenders are awesome. I mean, it's they've had plenty of people over the years and I've always just enjoyed my time and yeah never uh, never had a bad uh, experience here. Perfect. Well, I appreciate it. Well, no problem.